Hey guys, this is Illusionist Jason Bishop. I'm back discussing another piece of magic. Now today I'm actually on the Seaborn Odyssey. I think we're in St. Kitts today. I didn't get off and I've been working on some stuff so I'm not really aware, but you can see the view is pretty ridiculous and beautiful, so that's cool. Now I am a professional illusionist. I've been doing magic for well over 10 years. I've toured the United States in both colleges and theaters. I've been featured on TV shows like The Today Show, CBS Sunday Morning, La Plus Grand Cabaret de Monde in Paris, France, and I've had two successful shows in New York City at the famed New Vic Victory Theater. And in between working on new magic, doing shows, traveling, etc., I bring up videos online like this and I give you guys my thoughts on them as a professional illusionist. And I picked a specific video for you today. This video is actually from when David Copperfield did his Bermuda Triangle special. And the reason I picked it is because we're on a cruise ship, we're on an island. He did this on an island and it has a nautical theme. He uses a couple different ships and yachts and things uh, throughout this special. So I thought it was apropos to pick this piece of magic. I haven't seen this in years. I'm really not sure what he's about to do. I'm gonna take a look and give you my honest feedback as I watch it basically. So let's get started with David Copperfield's Bermuda Triangle compilation. Here we go. It's interesting, he's starting with this sort of B-roll setup of the island from, looks like helicopter. And today we just use probably a drone. Some people would still use helicopters. These are really great shots. It, it gets you interested, that's for sure. And it gets you in the vibe that he wants to set up. Let's keep watching. just hit me as they zoomed in there on the ship a little bit on the yacht. This is sort of an homage to what was popular in that day, which was MTV videos, obviously. It just hit me. Um, so, you know, today people might utilize something like TikTok or Snapchat or Instagram stories and utilize some of the filters or techniques that they do on that. This was of its time because it was an MTV video kind of a, a vibe. So let's keep going. David Copperfield really sailed and stuff and knew how to do this or if this is just him play acting for the for the special I'm curious sunglasses that was that was definitely the sunglasses for him apparently I think there's a lot going on there it's kind of interesting actually because he's utilizing a pretty common technique in magic that frankly a lot of magicians have used he's combined that with something as simple as the jacket that he has there he has that jacket and he's utilizing this technique with a, a common object in this case this jacket and then he's doing these uh, changes of his sunglasses so it's not just some sort of weird little mystical box or object it's a common functional object sunglasses in this this case. And so this is very David Copperfield to incorporate common everyday objects that actually would have, you know, some sort of an end goal to them as such. In this case, it's to impress this girl that's on the ship and to entertain her with the goofy sunglasses and stuff. But so, I mean, you know, it's important for guys, girls to get the right pair of sunglasses, right? You don't want to have a weird pair of sunglasses that you don't enjoy. Everybody knows, you know, whether it's clothing or sunglasses or your haircut or whatever, sometimes you feel awkward and silly and you don't feel the way you wanna feel. 
So he's utilizing this magic to demonstrate, you know, finding the exact right pair of sunglasses. She approves, he approves, and now we go on to the next scene, I guess. But I, I really do think that was pretty clever to utilize common objects that way to a really simple goal that everybody has, to look their best, to look correct, to, and in this case also to sort of goofily entertain this this young lady that he's trying to impress. Obviously this is all a little vignette, you know, we don't believe that this is really what's happening as such, but it was fun. Let's move on. It's getting serious now. He has to up the level now. He can't just do sunglasses. He thinks he needs horseback riding on the beach to really impress this, this lady. We've got Johnny from Karate Kid over here. Of interesting because uh, that's almost an autobiographical piece because every magician has encountered that person who has to do the you know pulling the thumb off or some kind of super corny magic trick and you know we all t take it in stride and stuff but it, I don't know that it's intended as degrading but it's not the nicest thing to do to somebody is this just goofy kind of thing do you go up to a singer and then just like sing in their face out of tune or something like that you know no not really but so we all kind of take it in stride it's not a big deal people are trying to relate to you somehow but i'm i know david copperfield has gotten that a million times of some goofy person and i think the actor who is playing the part of johnny from karate kid one right there later cobra kai you know he kind of captured that kind of jerkiness of some people pretty well who actually are trying to sort of degrade the fact that you've done magic and stuff some people are are just trying to be friendly with you and so they're being goofy and that's one thing but other people are really trying to to put you down and and sort of be derogatory about what you're doing and so uh, you know it, it's interesting that david put this in the special right there because i'm sure he encountered that quite a few times. Maybe not that exact same thing, although maybe, frankly. And of course, when he lifted himself up on the beach, it's great because it's a found space. He's on a beach, it's open, there's air, there's sand, there's water. You know, this isn't a stage, and so people kind of like magic sometimes to be a little bit less staged in an elaborate way. And in this case, um, you know, the funny thing was that being on a beach like that, it, it's still pretty elaborate, frankly, but you know, it's a real trick. You know, it looked decent. It was, there's a lot of light around him. It's not like on stage sometimes where it, it's dark and people think that that has something to do with it or whatever. So, so let's keep watching and see what, see what else he does. We've progressed through the day. It's nighttime now. It's I think she's just gonna leave him in the end, honestly. Let's see if that happens.
that's the whole piece. I, I have to say that last piece with the diamond, you can see why they saved that for last because that, that's pretty good. And that, that you could do on stage that someone could recreate live to some degree for sure at close up at a table. Uh, that depends, it'd be a little bit harder there. But no, that, that is a recreatable trick. That's a good trick. It fits the context of it. They had that whole story arc. They get to the end, the diamond, maybe that symbolizes that he's asking her to marry him. You know, who knows? Smoke is a great way to symbolize that a transformation is happening. Light is a great way to symbolize that energy is occurring and that that's impetus for the change. And so he closes his hands and we see light peeking out the sides and then smoke, you know, coming out as well. We know something is going on inside of there, not to mention where are those elements coming from. Then he opens his hand, the object, the black, you know, charcoal kind of thing is completely gone. And he's got this diamond there. I, I really like that. I thought that was really, really cool, frankly. You know, David Copperfield has very often expressed that one of the worst things he did in his career was this special, was the Bermuda Triangle special. And I really don't know why he feels that way, frankly. There's a cheesiness to it and, and what have you, but I actually, I think it stands out from some of his other specials, frankly, as a little bit better uh, in some ways. You know, there's some interesting magic in there. He does this weird piece with a chicken that maybe I'll, I'll and a duck that went, <laughs> chicken and a duck, and they walk into a bar that maybe one day I'll review, but um, it, it's an interesting, very different, odd, quirky piece of magic, frankly, that I haven't seen anybody else ever really do. Maybe some of the techniques they've utilized in different ways, but not, not to the effect that he did it. I don't know, I think it was a pretty good special, frankly. Now, it was a little corny in the sense that, you know, he's trying to harness the powers of the Bermuda Triangle and then he disappears at the end and will he be found again and all that it was kind of a cheesiness there, but I don't see that as a big critical point, frankly, you know, I think it, was a distinct break away from him vanishing the Statue of Liberty, vanishing a jet, walking through the Great Wall of China. He was sort of utilizing these culturally significant things like monuments and things like that. And so he tried to do that with the Bermuda Triangle, but that's also a mythical kind of a thing, right? Because you've got the Statue of Liberty. That's, that's not a mythical thing. That is a actual object that has a particular significance. You've got the Great Wall of China. Again, it's what, one of two one or two man-made things that can be seen from space. I mean, it's a legitimate wall that has legitimate cultural significance. And so in this case, he transcended that a little bit and he went to something that has some degree of cultural significance, but it's also really shrouded in a lot of mystery because you know, in reality, I don't think there are that many more planes and ships that go down in the Bermuda Triangle. And it's a pretty darn big area, frankly. Planes and ships are gonna go down inside. The Bermuda Triangle is a massive, massive area. And I don't think there's ever been any anomalies that have been proven that compasses and GPSs and stuff, you know, mess up there. I think people go through there all the time. You know, cruise ships go there to Bermuda, you know, all the time. I didn't personally view that special in any lesser way. I'd be curious to find out what he was so critical about with that special, why he was, why he's so sort of down on it a little bit. But anyway, that's my take on the Bermuda Triangle compilation here of David Copperfield. It was of its time, it was of the 80s. It definitely had a music video feel that I can actually appreciate, frankly. I think at the time, that was probably pretty darn good. And even today, I mean, the cinematography, the staging, some of the effects really still live up. Now, it has an 80s kind of vibe to it that certainly wouldn't fly today. But as far as the magic, the design of the video, storyline of a guy trying to woo a girl over as such, you know, yeah, those things all still work absolutely today. I mean, if you change the clothing and the music, you could recreate that thing darn near exactly and people would be like, they'd get it. You know, they'd be fine with it. And not that anybody should do that because, you know, you can be inspired by someone else's magic, but you certainly can never steal it and you don't even want to be overly influenced by it in what you decide to do. So that was my basic brief take on the David Copperfield Bermuda Triangle compilation. It was definitely made for television. There's no question about that. And that's okay because television brings in new audiences. A lot of magicians who came up during the 80s saw David Copperfield and really wanted to do magic as a career or as a hobby because of seeing these specials, there's no doubt. And what is it, high tides raise all ships. And so if he does better than the local magician who does birthday parties or the regional magician who does colleges or what have you, I'll do a little bit better because people are on television doing good magic that is entertaining and that the audiences at home enjoy. If you'd like to learn magic, if you'd like to buy some magic, if you need any new magic tricks, then there's a link below for Vanishing Ink. That's an online magic store where you can purchase magic, download videos, etc. It does help out our channel a little bit if you use the affiliate link that's below. So thank you very much for watching. If you did like this video, please destroy the like button. If you'd like to see more, then hit subscribe to subscribe and hit the bell if you'd like to get notified and we will see you in the next one.